I guess we got to talk some college football. I'm excited. Tomorrow in Ireland, I would give you an Irish accent, but I'm terrible at accents. I'd said something like, good day, like I'd totally screw it up. Florida State, number 10 Florida State, taking on Georgia Tech. Florida State is laying 10 and a half. They are minus 450 on the money line. Georgia Tech is plus 350. The total is 55 and a hook. DJ Uyunglele is now the quarterback at Florida State. Went from Clemson. Oregon State, now Florida State. You know what I think? I think Georgia Tech's the right side here. This number has come towards the Yellow Jackets. First of all, he is a step down from Jordan Travis. Jordan Travis was so dynamic last year. The Yellow Jackets have a ton of starters on offense. And I know the Seminoles are going to be super motivated after not making the playoff last season. And I know they have a huge beef with that. I get that. But... I think Georgia Tech is the, I think this is too many points for an opening game, especially when it's overseas. I don't know if it's my favorite game on the slate, but I'm going with the Yellow Jackets. In fact, my friend Alyssa, who is with the lovely Catherine in Munich right now, went to Georgia Tech. She's an architect. So let's go Georgia Tech plus 10 and a half. Ah, oh, the hell of an engineer. Isn't that in their fight song? It's like I something, think. something, rambling wreck, hell of an engineer. Uh, yeah, if nothing makes you cower in your boots at a football game, it's that <laughs> they're really good engineers. Uh, but for me, I think I had the initial first reaction that you did was, okay, this is the first game of the season. This is overseas. There are some wonky factors that make me not want to lay a big number. But here's the other thing, and the other point that I want to bring up. How much does coaching matter in the first game of the year when you have the extra time to prepare and you have more time to scheme up things? Because Mike Norvell can make a great case for being one of the best head coaches in college football right now. In fact, he was a finalist for just about every Coach of the Year award last year. The Seminoles finished 13-1. and And you could look at their team and say, well, they were really talented last year. But this guy's done it at every single level. And it feels yeah. like he is fully capable of leading a team to success, even without the best talent. He did it at Memphis, uh, where he took a team that was not very good and left him at 12 and one and then got the job at Florida State where he took over a program that was very much in the dumps. His first season, they were three and six. But every single season at Florida State, they have improved their win total by at least two games. Uh, so I feel like I'm not gonna sit here and say they're gonna win 15 games. That's not possible. Uh, but I am saying that coaching matters here. So Jenks, let me ask you this. How much do you think coaching matters in this first weekend of the season? In the first week, mm... Not too much. It, it matters. Take an extra it's, time to prepare. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I guess that's true. It's true. I think that I tend to think that when you're talking about a spread of like double digits here in a closer game where if this were what, three or four points, then you can make a coaching decision or two that could absolutely tilt how a game will work out. But I feel like where the spread is around where it is, we're still talking about Florida State versus Georgia Tech. This is just one of those games where it might be closer, too close for comfort for Seminoles fans, I think. But also, they can just out-talent Georgia Tech. Even though Georgia Tech might have a little more experience offensively, they can just out-talent the Yellow Jackets. So coaching matters, but I think it matters more in the bigger games, and I think it matters more as the season goes on when – all of a sudden, you have these best laid plans that don't work out. You have injuries to mitigate. All of a sudden, you have certain guys who aren't performing at a different level. Then coaching really comes into play because you've got to do a better job of managing the situation. So, Also, I think it depends on who you're playing. So, This is a tough matchup, but when we're talking about SMU and Nevada, which is also on the schedule, I will be on the ponies in this one. They're 24 and a half point favorites, SMU is. So how much does coaching matter? I think it depends on a lot of variables. Not as much, I would think, in this game if you're talking about Florida State and Georgia Tech as opposed to other games. I think I would disagree. I think yeah. Mike Norvell is extremely good at scheming up things and extremely good at getting his guys ready for the situation. Because remember last year, uh, the game in which they didn't have their starting quarterback, I think it was the ACC title game or something. He still brings his players ready to play, mm -hmm. even when the situation's at its worst. So I don't even think the situation is at its worst. Uh, but if you're sold, or excuse me, if you're not sold on a side, maybe you take a look at the over. If you believe in both of these offenses, 
we've seen some steam on this total, steaming all the way to 55 and a half. Because here's the thing. I think the way that you make a case for Georgia Tech is through their offense. Last year, there was a point in the season where they were top 25 in EPA on their offense. Haynes King returns, had 37 touchdowns last year. Sometimes he was a little careless with the ball, uh, but they also return a thousand yard uh, rusher uh, at running back at Jamal Haynes. And also four, or excuse me, three of their top four receivers from last season. So I think their offense can get it done. It's just Georgia Tech's defense has a ton of holes. I think they were in like the bottom hundred uh, on defensive EPA. So I think the over is worth a look here too. Okay. I don't mind that. Also, I just want to say I am laying 24 and a half at SMU. I'll play down to 24 because you know me. I don't mind the juice. I think SMU is going to smoke. Nevada. The Mustangs were one of the highest scoring teams in football last year they averaged 38 points a game and they really got rolling once Preston Stone at quarterback kind of found his footing I think the last few games they averaged like 50 points a game also they're in the ACC now which is crazy to think about I think they want to make a statement I think SMU rolls let's talk about these other games on the slate because we have Montana State and New Mexico Montana State length 12 and a half we have SMU Nevada SMU length 24 and a half And we have Hawaii and Delaware State, the degenerate special. Hawaii length 40 and a half. (laughs) So of these games, is there any that are going to be games you'll be betting on? Well, I will say I'll make it quick because I really like SMU. But I'm with Kate on laying 40 and a half Hawaii, (laughs) which I know sounds (gasps) ridiculous. I know. But Delaware State might be the worst team in the country. And when I say in the country, I mean – the worst team in the country, regardless of FBS, FCS. They won, what, a game last year? One game. Now they have to go from Delaware, not just across the country. They got to go across the globe. They have to go from (laughs) Delaware to Hawaii. Their flight was delayed a day or something that Kate was telling us about. I mean, this is just... They missed their flight. They missed their flight. God. So... This is already a terrible football team that has to go halfway across the earth to play Hawaii, which likes to score points in bunches anyway. This could get really ugly. This could be like a 56 nothing game, so I do like Hawaii. But the play I like even more is I like SMU. I'm going to play it to 24. Mm-hmm. It's at 24 and a half, 25 in some spots. But I think they smoke Nevada. And when you look at how they got better as the season progressed last year, Preston Smith, or Stone, I should say, at quarterback, I mean, they averaged like 50 points a game in their last four games. Once he got his feet under him and learned that offense, this is a very quick, high-scoring offense. They play pretty good defense as well. SMU is now in the ACC, which I still cannot wrap my head around, but I think they're going to smoke Nevada. And I think they make a statement saying, we're here, we're in the ACC, we're better than you think. I love SMU. 